Today I'm going to read the fairy tale about Hansel and Gretel by Brothers Grimm. So, once upon a time, a poor woodcutter lived on the edge of a large forest. He didn't have a bite to eat and barely provided the daily bread for his wife and two children, Hansel and Gretel. It reached a point when he couldn't even provide that anymore. Provide. Indeed, he didn't know how to solve this predicament. One night, as he was tossing and turning in bed because of his worries, his wife said to him, Listen to me, husband. Early tomorrow morning, you, you are to take both the children and give them each a piece of bread. Then lead them into the middle of the forest where it's most dense. After you build a fire, a fire for them, go away and leave them there. We can no longer feed, we can no longer feed them. No, wife, the man said, I don't have the heart to take, to take my own chil children and abandon them to wild beasts, for, their, for they soon came and tear them apart in the forest. If you don't do that, his wife responded, we shall all have to starve to death. She didn't give him any peace until he said yes. Peace, as peace, not like peace. The two children were still awake because of their hunger and they, and they had heard everything that their mother said to their father. Gretel told, now it's all over for me, and began to weep pitiful tears. But Hansel spoke, be quiet Gretel, don't get upset, I'll find a way to help us. <laughs> Upon seeing this, he got up, put on his little jacket, opened the bottom half of the door and crept outside. The moon was shining very brightly and the white pebbles glittered in front of the house like pure silver coins. Pebbles. Okay. Hansel stopped down to the ground and stuffed his pocket with as many pebbles as he could find. Then he went back into the house. These pebbles are shiny stones, right? Don't worry, Gretel. Just sleep quietly. And he lay down again in his bed and fell asleep. Early the next morning, before the sun had even began to rise, their mother came and woke them, woke the two children. Get up, children. We are going into the forest. Here is a piece of bread for each of you. But be smart and don't eat it until noon. Gretel put the bread under her apron because Hansel has the pebbles in his pocket. Then they all set out together into the forest. After they had walked a while, Hansel stopped still and looked back at the house. He did this time and again until his father said, Hansel, what are you looking at there and why are you dawdling? Pay attention and march along. Oh, father, said Hansel, I'm looking at my little white cat that, that's sitting up on the roof and wants to say goodbye to me. You fool, the mother said, that's not a cat, it's the morning sun shining on the chimney. <laughs> but Hansel had not been looking at the cat. Instead, he had been looking at the shiny pebbles from his pocket that he had been dropping on the ground. When they reached the middle of the forest, the father said, Children, I want you to gather some wood. I'm going to take to make a fire so you won't get cold. Hansel and Gretel gathered together, gathered together some brushwood and built quite a nice little pile. The brushwood was soon kindled and when the fire was ablaze, the mother said, Now chil children, lie down by the fire and sleep. We are going into the forest to chop wood. When we are finished, we'll come, we'll come back and get you. So she lied. 
Hansel and Gretel sat by the fire, and when noon came, they kept eating their pieces of bread until evening. But their mother and father did not return. Nobody came to fetch them. When it, when it became pitch dark, Gretel began to weep, but Hansel said, Just wait a while until the moon has ri ris risen. Rise. <laughs> and when the full moon had risen, Hansel took Gretel by the, by the hand. The pebbles glittered like newly minted silver coins and showed them the way. They walked the whole night long and arrived back, back at their father's house at break of day. Their father rejoiced with all this, with all his heart, when he saw his children, children again, for he had no, not liked the idea, the idea of abandoning them alone in the forest. Their mother also seemed to be delighted by their return, but but but, but secretly she was angry. <laughs> Well, not long after this, there was once again nothing to eat in the house, and one evening Gretel heard her mother say to their father, the children found their way back on time, one time, and I just let that go, but now there is nothing left in the house expect, except for a half a loaf of bread. Tomorrow you must take them further into the forest so they won't find their way back home again. <clears throat> Otherwise, there is no hope for us. All this sudden, saddened the father, and he thought, I'd be much better to share your last bite to eat with our children. But since he had given in the first time, he also had to yield a second. Um, So, Hansel and Gretel again overheard their parents' conversation. The Hansel got up and intended to gather pebbles once again, but their parents had locked the door. Nevertheless, he, he comforted Gretel and said, Just sleep, dear Gretel. The dear Lord will certainly help us. Early the next morning, they each received a little piece of bread, but they were smaller than the last time. On the way into the forest, Hansel crumbled the bread in, in his pocket and stopped as often as he could to throw the crumbs on the ground, making a bread crumb. Hansel, why are you always stopping and looking around? asked the father. Keep going. Oh, I am looking at my little pigeon that sitting on the roof and wants to say goodbye to me, Hansel answered. You fool, his mother said, that's not your little pigeon, it's the morning sun shining on the chimney. Now their mother led the children even deeper into the forest until they came to a spot they had never been to, be to before in their lives. Once again, they were to sleep by a large fire and their parents were to came and fetch them in the evening. When noon came, Gretel sh shared her bread with Hansel because he had scattered his along the way. Noon went by and then evening passed, but no one came for the poor children. Hansel comforted Gretel and said, Just wait until the moon has risen, Gretel. Then I'll see the little breadcrumbs that I scattered. They'll show us the way back home. When the, the moon rose and Hansel looked for the breadcrumb, they were gone. <laughs> they were gone because the many thousands of birds that fly about the forest had found them and gobbled them up. Nevertheless, Han Hansel believed he could find the way home and pulled Gretel along with him but they soon lost their way in the great wilderness. They walked the entire night and all the next day as well, from morning till night, until they fell asleep from exhaustion. 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 
exhaustion of okay I'll learn that then they walked for one more day but they didn't find their way out of the forest well they probably ate some berries found around because two days with no food <laughs> they were now also very hungry for they had had nothing to eat except some berries that they had found growing on the ground <laughs> well how very convenient on the third day they continued walking until noon then then they came to a little house made of bread with cake for a roof and pure sugar for windows ah the sweet house <laughs> let's sit down and eat until we are full, said Hansel. I want to eat a piece of the roof. Gretel, you can have a part of the window since it's sweet. Hansel had already eaten a good piece of the roof and Gretel had devoured a couple of small round windows and was about to break off a new one when they heard a shrill voice cry from inside. Nibble, nibble, I hear a louse. Who's that nibbling on my house? <laughs> Hansel and Gretel were so tremendously frightened that they dropped what they had in their hands and immediately thereafter, thereafter, thereafter a small ancient woman crept out of the door. She shook her head and said, Well now, dear children, where, where, have, you, where have you came from? Mm. Come inside with me. I'll have a good time. You'll have a good time. She took them both by the hand and led them into her little house. Then she served them a good meal of milk and pancakes with sugar and apples and nuts. Afterward, she made up two beautiful beds and when Hansel and Gretel lay down in, the, in them, they thought they were in heaven. The old woman, however, was really a wicked witch on the looking for children and had built the house made of bread only to lure them to her. So the house was a trap. As soon as she had any children in her power, she would kill, cook and eat them. It would be like a feast day for her. Therefore, she was quite quite happy that Hansel and Gretel had come to her had, had come her way. Early next morning, before the children were awake, she got up and looked at the two of them sleeping so sweetly and she was delighted and thought, there'll certainly be a tasty meal for you. <sighs> hmm. Then she grabbed Hansel and stuck him into a small coop and when he woke up, he was behind a wire mech used to lock up chickens. Ah, uh, in the chicken uh, prison, something like that. And he couldn't move, move about. Immediately after, she shook, she, she shook Gretel and yelled, Get up, you lazy bones. Fetch some water and then go into the kitchen and cook something nice. Your brother sitting in a chicken coop. I want to, f to fatten him up and when he is fat enough I am going to eat him. But now I want you to feed him. So what will she eat? More fat? <laughs> Gretel was frightened and wept but she had to do what the witch demanded. So the very best foods were was cooked for poor Hansel so that he would become fat, while Gretel got nothing but croup shells. Every day the old woman came and called out, Hansel, stick out your finger so I can feel whether you are fat enough. However, Hansel stuck out a little bone and the witch was continuously puzzled that Hansel didn't get any fur any fatter. Uh -huh. One evening, after the after a month has passed, she said to Gretel, 
get a move on a fat get a move on and fetch some water I don't care whether your little brother's fat enough or not he's going to be slaughtered and boiled tomorrow in the meantime I want to prepare the, the dog so that we could also bake so Gretel went off with a sad heart and fetched the water in which Hansel was to be boiled <laughs> okay early the next morning Gretel had to get up light the fire and hang up a kettle full of water make sure that it boils said the witch I'm going to light the fire in the oven and shove the bread inside Gretel was standing in the kitchen and wept blood, bloody tears and thoughts. It would have been better if the wild animals in the forest had eaten us. Then we would have died together and wouldn't have had to bear this sorrow and I wouldn't have to boil the water that will be the death of my dear brother. Oh dear God, help us poor children get out of this pretty cayment. Came on. Then the old woman called, Gretel, come right away over here to the oven. When Gretel came, she said, look inside and see if the bread is already nice and brown and well done. My eyes are weak, I can no longer see so well from a distance, and if you can't see, then sit down on the, on the board and I will shove you inside. Then you can get her out inside and check everything. Hmm. The witch wanted to shut the oven door once Gretel was inside, while she wanted to bake her in the hood oven and eat her too. <laughs> this, this is what the wicked witch had planned and why she had called the girl. But but God inspired Gretel and she said, I don't know how to do it. First, you show it to me. Sit down on the board and I will shove you inside. <laughs> and so the old woman sat down on the board and since she was light, Gretel shoved her inside as far as she could and then she quickly shut, shut the oven door and bolted it with an iron bar. The old woman began to scream and groan in the hot oven, but Gretel ran off and the witch was miserably burned to death. <laughs> Meanwhile, Gretel went straight to Hansel and opened the door to the coop. After Hansel jumped out, they kissed each other and were glad. The entire house was full of jewels and pearls and eatings, maybe, so they filled their pockets with them. Then they went off and found their way home. Their father rejoiced when he, he saw them again. He didn't spend a single happy day since his children had been away. Now he was a rich man. However, the mother had died. Very convenient. And this is the fairy tale for Hansel and Gretel. Uh, it, that is for today. And until next fairy tale.